Welcome to the podcast. Today is proudly sponsored by Founders Coffee. It's right across the road from Ikea on Durango. And we also have one now on St. Rose. Now check it out. We've got a big event coming up in the next couple of weeks. where We're going to be having the Las Vegas Avengers making a special guest appearance down at Founders Coffee for a great charity event. We're going to keep you posted on that. But in the meantime, if you go down there, drop your WHH promo code. You're going to get 10% off whatever you buy. How could we forget? We're really, really excited about this, guys. One of our brand new affiliates. This is one of the top mixed martial arts sites on the internet today. MMA Uncensored. These guys are coming on board with what happens here. We're going to be combining a bunch of our stuff. Make sure that you give them a follow on Instagram, also on YouTube. We're going to be filling you in with a lot more information about these guys, and we're really, really excited about this new affiliation. How could we forget Jay Baller's Beard Balm? Well, Jay, I don't have the beard, but it doesn't matter because you can use it anywhere on your body. I've used it on a few different places, and it works everywhere. Jay Baller's Beard Balm for when your beard... Needs to be money. And how could we forget today's proper podcast is fueled and is going to be fed by the Aussie Project, Australia's tastiest pies. We've got chicken pies. We've got meat pies. We've got sausage rolls. We're delivering here in Las Vegas in the Los Angeles area. Uh, free delivery too. So if you want a taste of Australia, that's not giving me a kiss. It's eating a meat pie. Check these guys out. And how could we forget today's episode is proudly fueled by... In Ireland, the highest form of compliment in any pub is an insult. So I'm considered quite complimentary. <laughs> proper number 12, Irish whiskey. It's a proper podcast. What's the story, guys? This is Marcus Deegan, the host of What Happens Here, shooting direct from Sin City, Las Vegas, on the last show of 2020. Thank you very much for joining us all around the world, um, especially to everybody on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio. I don't know where you're driving or if you're listening and you're driving uh, your, your truck at night. I had a buddy of mine the other day said that he streamed 12 episodes of What Happens Here uh, back to back. So he was driving his truck from one end of the country to the other. So if that's what you're doing, make sure you give us five stars. I do appreciate everybody that's listening. And, uh, and of course, everybody on YouTube that's watching, you know, it's been a crazy year for what happens here. And uh, we're, we're very, very proud that we made it till the end of the year. This is our last show. And, and we're really proud and stoked at the accomplishment that, that we've had. We're going to talk about that a little bit later on throughout the show. I would like to introduce my number one jabroni peroni, my co-host, Matthew, 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 <laughs> Matthew, Matthew Perino. What's up, Matty boy? Uh, what's going on? You butcher the name every week, but we all know it. How's everyone doing out there? And YouTube, iHeart Radio, Spotify, we got Apple Podcasts. Apple it's- Podcasts, we got it all. Check out the proper gear I got. Ooh. Ooh, a little shot of that, a little shot of the guns. I got permits for both of those, just so you know. Now, d- he's, been dying to, he's been dying to do that all afternoon. Now, Mer- Merry Christmas. How are you, Matt? Oh. How was your Christmas? It was beautiful. It was wonderful. A lot of family joy, a lot of giving, and all the happy feelings and vibes. And it's been a good one, bro. It's been a rough year, but uh, it ended on a really good note. So I want to thank everyone at What Happens Here. I want to thank you. I want to thank our main man, Mike, behind the camera over there, yeah. who's hiding. He's wearing a T-shirt that says, hashtag you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so so we're going to talk We're going to talk about, we're going to have Alex Biffo, who's going to come in a little bit later on. Good guy. We're going to have um, Hygiene Gene, the man that does a lot of our yes. visuals and, our, and our, um, our photography. Awesome camera guy. It's Travis's last show with us today. Yeah. My engineer, Travis, it's his last show. We got to get him on screen. I, I don't have a camera, but I, I'll say I love you, and I I will miss every episode that I'm not going to do in the future. Are you crying? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I yes. knew it. No, you're crying. You're so, crying. With a tear in my eye, this is the greatest moment of my life. Yeah, well, that's it. So we got a great <laughs> show for you today, man. We are speaking to people all over the world today. Um, one of my favorite countries, I've never been there. I've never been to Lebanon, but I do love Lebanese food. I will say that uh, this guy has an impressive list of accomplishments, starting from, well, I'm sure his, 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 his best accomplishment is he's a dad, um, he's a coach, he's a judge, he's won many, many medals for judo. Um, he is running the Middle Eastern TriStar Gym over in Lebanon, and we're going to be really, really happy to talk to him today. Christmas, our last show. Um, Wissam Abinada. Kifak, salam. 
Salam, <laughs> Kifak. Yes. I'm, <laughs> I'm doing great, show. brother. I'm doing great. Welcome to the show, brother. Thank you very much for joining us. Now, where, where are, you in, are you in Lebanon right now? What time of the day is it and what are you drinking? Uh, first of all, yeah, it's uh, 1 a.m., almost 1 a.m. in the morning. And uh, I'm in Lebanon and I'm, run, I'm drinking a proper 12 whiskey. So yes, cheers. my man, <laughs> my man. That, is the, uh, so, actually, I think that you're the uh, first guest that we've had from Lebanon that's had a drink of proper I love with it. us. So, cheers, my cheers, brother. My cheers, friend. my brother. Cheers. So, Merry Christmas, and uh, hope 2021 is going to be a different year. Of course, better than 2020. What we had in 2020 going to be much better. Yeah. Cool. Well, that, yeah. You know what? That's, I always like to start off the podcast with asking. Um, with some, obviously, 2020 was a difficult year for everybody all around. How did that affect your business um, over that side of the world, if it did at all? So basically, it affected the, of course, the gyms industry because uh, we closed for many months, uh, especially that. Uh, also, I'm, I'm in charge of, uh, of uh, the US gym in the region. So uh, we had a lot of problems. And also, uh, we, were, we were also uh, trying to face those problems. Uh, of course, this is, the gym, gym industry was, uh, was affected badly. And uh, mostly also in uh, the IMF, the events, the MMA events worldwide, uh, especially the, with the IMF, because I'm also a director at uh, the International MMA Federation which is sponsored also by UFC. And uh, we, we, we are handling uh, the development of the sports of MMA from grassroots to, to professional. So uh, we had many, we had a full calendar in 2020 and uh, unfortunately we had to postpone everything till 2021. Uh, wow. So that, that's yeah. mostly what, uh, what happened. So, so as far as um, plans for next year, is everything opening up over there now has the restrictions dropped are you guys going to be able to get back to some kind of normality shortly uh, we hope so uh, yeah. now with the vaccine uh, in uh, it, it, it uh, got to dubai also to all the gc countries uh, uh, hopefully we're, we're planning to 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 have a solution by february or march and uh, and also for all our events were postponed to till, till June 2021. We, want yeah. to make, we wanted to make sure that we start the right way and uh, we move on the right way. So we're hosting the worst. The first uh, uh, championship is going to be the Asian championship in Kazakhstan, uh, the Asian MMA amateur championship, IMF uh, uh, championship. Then we're moving uh, hopefully to Russia wow. for the European. And uh, then also moving back to Kazakhstan for the world championship. Uh, Australia for uh, Oceania. For the Was Oceania. that right? For the Oceania Championship. Wow, wow that's great. Yeah. Man, you, <laughs> you guys seem very, very busy, man. That's, that's, that's unbelievable. So, so as, as far as everything that you're doing, what's your main focus right now? Um, is it running the gym? Is it coaching? Um, is it working with the UFC? What's your main that you're doing th- right at this minute? Uh, basically, coaching have been uh, in my blood since, since forever. So, uh, but I... Uh, of course, I don't have uh, much time, time like before, because now I'm in the management uh, part uh, and in the operation, operation part also. So, um, and, uh, for IMA, for example, uh, we have a lot of work uh, going on, uh, uh, and this job takes a lot of your time. So uh, yeah. basically, my, I'm delegating a bit my coaching in uh, in the country for for uh, for my team. We have also good coaches, so I'm delegating that to to my and uh, i'm working on uh, on bigger issues you know uh, for uh, for mma events worldwide and uh, and of course running the gym industry and operating the gym industry in the middle east so where, where do you get all the time to do this and be a dad at the same time i was checking out your instagram earlier on and you're in a house full of girls my brother you're 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 in a house full of lovely <laughs> young ladies. Uh, how how does that how's that working for you, bro? <laughs> Honestly, uh, I have a very very understand and uh, and wise wife. I'm gonna say. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> She's so gonna be watching this later. On. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to the missus. Shout out to the Shout wife. Shout out to the wife. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, she she supports me a lot. No, honestly, she supports me a lot. Supports me a lot, and uh, they gave me the energy. They give me the energy basically to what I'm doing, 
and uh, Mihail knows me and a lot of friends uh, who knows me, I don't sleep much. So uh, I'm always working, I'm always thinking, I'm always, uh, you know, uh, trying to, to, to plan. And uh, I thank God for, for the energy he's giving me. So maybe later on, I'm not going to have this, the same energy, but for now, I'm, I'm using it. So that's it. Awesome. I love it. I love it. So you're obviously a very busy guy. Are you still judging nowadays? Or when was the last time you uh, officiated or, excuse me, judged a, an event? The last time I judged in 2015 uh, during the World IMF Championship in Las Vegas in, in, mm -hmm. the, in the UFC Expo because we hosted the World Championship 2014 and 15 inside the UFC Expo, so a fan expo. And uh, so I judged over there and then I was elected board of director in 2015 uh, and also the president of Asia, the Asia continent. So uh, I didn't have time to do this uh, since. Wow, it's a busy guy, busy guy. Coaching. He also knows fighting. Uh, judo, correct? You know, you know uh, judo. You're a judo practitioner, right? Yeah, judo, judo was, my, judo was uh, my first martial arts. Uh, I was... 23 times in a row, uh, uh, Ali Bain's champion. Wow. I won the Arab championship, uh, West Asian. I, were, uh, I did a lot of uh, international championships. Then then I also moved wow. to Sambo, Combat Sambo. I had also medals in the Grand Prix, World Grand Prix. Uh, Jiu-Jitsu, but Japanese Jiu-Jitsu, not the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Yes. Uh, also, I have a lot of achievements in that. Okay, so for, so for people that are listening that don't know the difference between Japanese jiu-jitsu mm -hmm. and Brazilian um, jiu-jitsu, Wissam, can you give us a little bit of an instructional on what the difference is between the two? Obviously, they're from two different countries, but um, for, for people that aren't familiar with the difference between the two, what is it? Yeah, we, we all agree. Uh, first, if you talk to a Japanese guy, he's going to tell you there's no Brazilian jiu-jitsu. There's nothing <laughs> old about <laughs> <laughs> so for them, it's a, it's a different system of teaching uh, jujitsu. But uh, of course, it started with Japanese jujitsu. We all know that. And uh, also with judo, it uh, it was the Nawaza part. Nawaza is the ground part. So uh, so that was basically the start. And uh, of course, Gracie's family they developed this with the with the to try and fit what they were trying to do with the Valetudo. You know, Valetudo means mm -hmm. everything is allowed. So they're trying to do MMA. Uh, and use their jujitsu knowledge to win their fights. And uh, of course, if we look at the uh, UFC when they started, uh, all the champions were basically grapplers. But now it's different. Now, uh, now we see that uh, uh, that the game is has evolved so much that uh, you have to be well rounded to to win the fight. Uh, Absolutely. And uh, so, if we want, if we want. So Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu for me is, uh, of course, they knew how to promote it, uh, and uh, they were smart for doing that. But it uh, it got famous when the Jiu-Jitsu uh, Gracie family uh, started winning in MMA with their Jiu-Jitsu technique, and this is how it grew. For me, that's yeah. of course the start of uh, the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu growing in the world. Yeah, of course, we have also. I'm, I'm going to mention something in Dubai. You know that in Dubai you have the biggest uh, com uh, BJJ community worldwide. They do is that right? Worldwide. No, I wasn't aware of that. I wasn't aware of that. Why is that? It's uh, in Abu Dhabi, uh, in sorry, in Emirates, in Abu Dhabi. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and this is because the Sheikh Abdul Manam Al Hashimi, he used to do BJJ and he fell in love with it as a as in martial arts, and uh, so he he went all, you know, he gave it all the support. And uh, they have 600,000 members in uh, the UAE BJJ Federation. Just imagine that. It's the biggest in the world. They do, they do the biggest events in the world. They have the, the best coaches over there. So everybody who wants to go do great, build a future in BJJ, he goes to, to, do, to Emirates. Wow. Do you spend a lot of time in Abu Dhabi these days? Oof. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you about also the uh, PCR test uh, I've done because I think I need in a month and a half I still need six uh, tests and I will beat Khabib's record. <laughs> <laughs> so, wow! Wow! wow. So, that's, so uh, we know you've been close to uh, Yaz Island because with the UFC gym being in uh, Dubai, have you been to uh, Fight Island yet? Have you witnessed any of these have these matches down on Fight Island? Yeah. 
yes, I've witnessed the first uh, two. Mm -hmm. uh, recently, now it was tougher because uh, they, they are in a bubble. I don't know if you know, but they're in, the, in a bubble. And it's, the process of going in and out is very tough. Mm -hmm. uh, even if you have work, you know, you have to go in and uh, quarantine yourself and then get out. And it's, it's a very, um, uh, I'm going to say, it's, it's very, very, uh, you know, uh, very strict, uh, very strict. Yeah. Very strict. That, that's mm -hmm. it. How long do you have so, to quarantine uh, to, to get inside that bubble? How long do they want you to quarantine to get on Yaz Island? Now from, from the officials, IMF officials and, uh, you know, Mark Goddard, the, mm -hmm. the UFC referee, he's also our nice. head commission in uh, IMF and Mark oh, is a wow. very close friend. So Mark, uh, Mark was telling me that they have to quarantine all the time. They can't leave and, uh, they have to quarantine, quarantine three weeks before the event and one uh, and till the event ends wow. and they have to be tested every two, three days. So, uh, wow. It's a huge process. So this is most likely why they're having trouble getting fans in there. I know Dana White talked about International Fight Week right. being on Yaz Island. On, yeah. And uh, this is probably clearly why they can't do this, because that bubble is so strict. It's probably one of the safest places in the world. Yeah. They're having it everyone is. quarantined for so long, and they're testing everybody so much. You know, it, it's a very safe place, which is very well for the fighters and, and for the sport of and, MMA. And you know what? And you've got to, you've got to like, once again, we've talked about this a couple of times before, when the coronavirus first came out and all the sporting venues, all the sporting events, everything pretty much got shut down. Dana White, he fought through the controversy and the abuse and the slander and the hate and the negativity to, to keep the sport going. Um, so fair play to Dana White. for. I mean, I know people say it's very, very strict to get into that bubble, but it's for a reason. It's yeah. so we can keep we can keep doing these events Um so props to Dana White. Shout out to Uncle Dana. Shout out to Thank Uncle Dana. Thank you so Dana. much and for keeping the yeah. UFC and the sport alive and doing such a good job in this in this pandemic. Yeah, yeah. Done amazing. So so the IMMAF. Yeah, respect to what he did. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely respect to what he did. So I was going to ask a few questions about the um, IMMAF. Um, for, for once again. There's people that can't see us right now that are only hearing us. Can you just explain uh, the affiliation that you have with that? Of course. If IMF is the International MMA Federation. Uh, it's a non-profit uh, governing, international governing body for the sport of MMA. So uh, we have like now we, we, we have more than 130 federations worldwide. And our job is to develop the sport of MMA from from its uh, grassroots to to the up up uh, the level, and uh, and uh, also also we're developing the sport not only for amateurs; it's also for recreational people. Right. So we created a progression scheme for them. We have huge uh, uh, committees. We have uh, the coaching committees. We have John Cavanagh on board, also uh, Connor's nice. coach. Uh, nice. We have the technical committees, the judges and referees. Mark Goddard is head like this, and um, mm -hmm. and also we 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 worked. I, I, of course, you knew about, about France uh, situation where uh, MMA was banned, right? Also right, Portugal, right? That's and, right. That's uh, we right. Were, yep. And we were behind uh, the success of uh, removing the ban in France, and of course UFC was uh, was supporting us uh, through the the whole process, and because we presented the documents to show that MMA is a sport. MMA is uh, also we show them what uh, what is the pathway of an MMA athlete, and um, at the same time uh, we show them that MMA is one of the safest combat sports, and uh, nobody believed this until, yeah. until we show them numbers, uh, because uh, the MMA fighters are, get hits uh, less to the head. Most of the time they go to wrestling, you know. Sure. If you get knocked out, uh, knocked down, uh, you know, the, the and you're Stop going it. there. Mm -hmm. It stopped, and uh, he doesn't count to ten. And you know, that yeah. the, the whole uh, studies we did was was amazing, and uh, we moved the ban from Portugal. Also, I'm going to talking about the uh, medical tests we do before and after the events, and uh, the process of uh, all this. It's a huge process, and uh, it was very successful. So, we we, we had a very uh, big achievement of removing the ban in France, Portugal. And a lot of different countries. So, uh, wow, it's um, 
It's it's funny. It's funny because it, you, when, when you're talking about that, it's obviously it's something that you're very very passionate about. When I say passionate about the sport of mixed martial arts, not only being you know, you're being involved in it, but also obviously you know you have a lot to do with it for your professional life. Where did your passion for mixed martial arts come from, and why is it so important for you to spread the word of how amazing this sport is? Uh, okay, it started with. Uh... First, uh, I had a coach, uh, a Japanese, a Japanese coach, and he was also uh, in the same team of uh, Hideko Yoshida back then. Yoshida was was the Olympic judo champion, and he was the first judo f- uh, player to fight in Pride. If you remember, he was wearing the uh, the judo gi and fighting. He fought Crook up and yes, uh, I remember that. That's yeah. right. Oh, yeah, I remember Yoshida. that. That's a long legend. Time. Yeah. So basically, yeah. uh, of course, everyone, uh, every fighter or every athlete from different martial arts wants to 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 test his the efficiency of his martial arts in in a complete sport and uh, where everything is allowed or everything uh, you can do everything anything. So um, also with the with the athletes winning the the grapplers, I'm talking about most of the grapplers winning the the first UFC events. Uh, so it showed how. Uh, the grappling part was very uh, efficient, also in the in the uh, UFC and the yeah. martial arts MMA sport. And then, uh, then I started. You know, I'm, I'm very curious curious about uh, learning new stuff and uh, developing myself as a martial arts, martial artist. Artist. So I started uh, learning MMA, doing different uh, combat sports, and uh, trying uh, to uh, fight here and there. Uh, so uh, it's, it's, it has always been a passion. Although I'm, uh, my background is a computer engineer, so I graduated, graduated as a computer engineer <laughs> in in, uh, in uh, American school. So, but a, I've a always computer, been you know, a computer engineer that would whoop your ass quick and say, "How's your father?" So <laughs> never judge a ju- never judge a book by its cover. If someone says they're com- a computer engineer, you never know; they might put you in an armbar and break that thing off. <laughs> that, slam that, me in your head. That's awesome. Now we we mentioned earlier on that you have. You're living in a household full of women. Um, is, do you think that mixed martial arts or, or some kind of um, uh, is that something you're going to teach that you, 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 your daughters and you, or does your wife learn it as well? Uh, everybody, everybody asks me the, this question, so uh, I'm going to be yeah. I'm gonna, I'm going to teach them MMA. I'm going to teach them MMA for uh, for uh, first for self defense, self, to build their self confidence, their confidence, and uh, of course it's a sport, so uh, I know how. How efficient the martial arts is for for any human being, if it's a woman or or a man, uh, it helps you stress out. You know the the feeling behind it, the adrenaline you feel you feel behind it, and of course I'm going to teach them uh, martial yeah. arts. I'm already doing this. So yeah, uh, like that. also yeah. my wife, she started she started uh, learning uh, martial uh, MMA, and uh, but of course for for the decision to for them to fight or not, this is it. it uh, I will leave this to them. So I will leave the decision to them when <laughs> it, they grow up. So it also values great discipline as well. I mean, people that yeah, start martial arts from a younger age just end up becoming a, a better human being, just in general. They stay out of trouble and more focused in life. So, 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 so let me ask you this one, Coach. When you're watching the UFC and you're seeing some of these calls that the judges or the referees are making, and and you know they're completely off the scale, how crazy does that? drive you when you're watching them make these calls uh whoa <laughs> it depends on also the uh, the <laughs> yeah, because i yeah yeah it's uh, i'm not gonna specify any any referee i, I, have, I have a lot of friends inside so but uh, of course it's frustrating to see you know the fight uh, stopped early at the early stage um uh, Listen, the referee is not is not perfect. No, nobody's perfect, and everybody does mistakes. And it depends on, also on the angle where he's staying, where he sees. And also, uh, we have also to blame a, a lot the fighters, because at some point the fighters should react and show that they are still in the game. Sure. And right. uh, and it's it's like the fight uh, between Ben Askren and uh, Robert Robbie. Uh, Robert Whittaker. Robbie, yes, Robbie Lawler. Robbie sorry. Lawler, yeah. And, uh, mm-hmm. And uh, so he was a car in a bulldog choke, and uh, he didn't do any reaction. But he uh, gave a th- he, he gave a thumbs up, but he didn't see it. Herb didn't see it. 
he gave it lately, but uh, you know, but yeah. at some point uh, he, he waited again. But you know, Herb is one of the best also referees. We can't blame him. Yeah. So he, he wanted the, best the of job all time. of the referee is to is to protect the athletes, and this is why. Of course, sometimes you're pissed, but uh, you can't say anything because you know that they are doing their job to protect the athletes, and this is Absolutely. what's most important. Absolutely. What do you What do you think the biggest mistake is that um, referees make these days? Is it um, is is it their lack of knowledge, or do you think that um, do you think that uh, video replay should be brought in a little bit more? Do you think that they should be able to stop and start it and, and replay what exactly happened? Don't you think that would be a more efficient way of making a call? Like, for instance, if the referee doesn't see it, um, should he be able to, like, pull the replays back and, and, and look straight away? Don't you think that's a yes, smart? I, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. With IMF, we started doing the video replay. Uh, and, uh, for example, it's, uh, in one of the fights, the, the guy tapped from behind, and the referee didn't see the tap, so he continued the fight. And then the other guy loses. And uh, then they, they, they complained about, uh, about that. And we reviewed, we reviewed the video tape, and uh, Mark switched, changed the decision. So uh, wow, right? I, I, yeah, uh, and uh, so I, I think I think it's very good to do uh, the replay. They're doing yeah. it in all the sports now, in every sport, yeah. even football now. When they when, when nobody thought <laughs> football would do it, uh, they're yeah. doing it now. So uh, yeah, well, that, so that was going to be my question. It. It's it's got to be the same as any other sport. Every other sport in the world now is pretty much doing the video replay down to. Even if you can, if they're, when they're playing soccer to see if the foot goes over the line, they can replay it back. I just think it's a really good way of, you know, making it a little bit more fair. So, yeah. Um, so, here's another question that I'm thinking. As far as, um, and me and Matt have had this, me and Matt have had this discussion before. When it comes to judging, do you think that it would be more fair and smart that former fighters from the UFC organization that have retired to be judges? Uh, it helps, but it's not, uh, it's not everything. Uh, listen, uh, th there's a mistake. I think Dana White uh, said it also that uh, judges were not uh, practitioners of martial arts. Uh, right. Most of the judges were in, in, and they don't understand what the situations and what's efficient and what's not efficient. So we had, we had a lot of bad decisions uh, uh, in the game, in the sport of MMA worldwide. And then uh, also as IMF, because we're, everyone is being uh, formed and trained to be a judge. And uh, uh, so it, it, the, the commission, because we, we are an international federation, so our commission have grown very, very, very wide and very fast. So they're using a lot of our judges now in the UFC events, and uh, which is good. Uh, but to, to go back to your question, yes, he should be a martial artist. He should understand the situation. He should understand what is efficient, which technicalities are efficient or not, to see who, who's really uh, yeah. doing the job well in, in the sport of MMA. So uh, yes, it, it, it's better to be a martial artist or even a fighter. Uh, but uh, also fighters, you know, they, they, have, an, uh, they have a side of them uh, that they like about or style that they like, true, and it might be a bit biased when they judge, but true, uh, yeah. That, I actually never thought of that, but, yeah. It's, wow, it's kind of like when you go to you know, jury duty, if you'd like the guy, you want to yeah. be like, ah, yeah. So, if he was a wrestling, <laughs> I'll let him off. <laughs> if, if, so, if he was a wrestling based fighter and he saw more takedowns, he'd be more biased towards the wrestling. I actually never thought of that. That's actually a really good yeah. point of view right there. Yeah. What do you think about but, total... But let me Go tell ahead. you one thing about, uh, about uh, the sport of MMA now. I think in five, day, five years, five right. years from now, you're not going to be hearing about the base uh, of any fighter. You're going to be hearing about everyone does MMA. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, this is why also we're doing this is our job also as AMF because we are a sport and, uh, and we're taking the butter of every of your martial arts and you have to, you have to learn this to become the perfect martial artist. So uh, I think within five to eight years, everybody's going to be doing MMA, competing MMA. He's going to be doing MMA. He's going to yeah, learn every cool. angle, every, every position, uh, you know, from MMA. And now they're throwing the entertainment right. side into it. 
Sure. You know what I mean? The entertainment factor is just huge with just the personalities of the fighters that they've got. Um, with some, who is some of your favorite fighters that are in the industry at the moment that uh, you really get excited about watching? Uh, for me, for me uh, now, I, of course, I like watching uh, Conor McGregor. He's, uh, he's a show on itself. You know, Conor changed the game and uh, he changed the, the, whole, the whole vision of the game and the whole entertaining industry in the, in the MMA, uh, in the sport of MMA. But if, you, if, I, if I want to go back to who's my favorite uh, athlete, I will tell you Anderson Silva by far. I love Anderson. Uh, I will also, yeah, I'll, I'll tell you Anderson because uh, Anderson Silva is what he's done for 10 years. Uh, I think till now, nobody has done it. I love John Jones also because John Jones, you know, there's also, also always this, uh, this discussion who's the goat, who the MMA goat. Right. Art of Lobov. Put, I, I, I love Khabib. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, Art. Shout out to Art. <laughs> the number one. <laughs> I, I love Khabib a lot, and uh, I really respect what he's done in the sport. But uh, yeah. for me, I would put always Khabib in place number four. Yeah. I would never wow. put him in front of John Jones. And John Jones uh, winning the belt at 19, he was 19 years old. Nobody done, has done that. And that then he, he, he beat the, the names he beat at that age, at an early stage. Uh, Rampage, Shogun, Rua Shogun, Lyoto Machida. I know those people were legends yeah. at, back, back then. And yeah, he beat yeah. everyone. And uh, so he's done what nobody done. Unfortunately, uh, with a drug test uh, failure, he, he, he failed many times. And that's uh, why I, I you know, uh, I, I would put also G G GSP, of course, your St. Pierre. And uh, for me, he's the most perfect and well-rounded athlete in the sport. Uh, you know, he, 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 he does everything. He learned everything. He's a very smart uh, fighter. And, uh, and then if you want, if you want to tell me Khabib, I'll tell you Khabib, yes. But Khabib never dared to change the divisions. He never yeah. dared to fight at welterweight right. or featherweight like Conor did. He never... Uh, he, I think I think also with his fight his fight with Conor, uh, if you look at the fight, he, he, Conor won one round. And uh, he's the only fighter maybe he won a round on Khabib. What changed the game is, the, is Khabib, uh, not that because he almost knocked him out down, but that wasn't... It doesn't say anything, you know. It doesn't say that Khabib is better than uh, Khabib's striking is better than Connor's striking. Uh, the thing is, MMA it, there's a leverage game, right? You know, when somebody is afraid of getting down or, or, or taken down, taken down, you're thinking uh, about the takedowns, and lower, it's easier to get caught. Yeah, you lower your hand because you want to sprawl and uh, defend it, so you, an overhand can easy easily uh, land, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, Connor, Connor, after being taken down in the first round, he was you know he was careful about this, and so. Was dropping his hands, so that's where that's where Khabib touched him. I think right. this punch changed the whole game. Uh, I don't know if they fight again, what will happen, but uh, I, I would love to see this fight again. Well, we would love to see Let's it see too, what and what happens here. We would love to see Connor. But speaking of changing weight classes and, and George St. Pierre, there there is a small rumor, you know, that GSP would only come back to fight Habib Nurmagomedov for the lightweight championship and Habib himself has said he would m probably only come back to fight George St. Pierre. Do you maybe have any insight of that, of what's going on? I know him and Dana were going to meet very soon. To he, talk. Looked, he looked down. He looked down. He does know something. I saw, I saw you, Asim. You looked down. <laughs> he knows something. There's a twinkle no, in your I'm eye. Gonna, I'm going to tell you the my uh, my analysis for the, for what's happening uh, gsp have done tests to drop uh, weight till till uh, to lightweight and yeah. uh, he lost a lot of uh, his power and uh, stamina uh -huh. by doing this so uh, the perfect uh, weight for him to drop at it was 74 kilograms and Khabib didn't accept to fight him at 74 you know they were doing they were trying to do the catch weight and uh, unfortunately Khabib didn't accept to fight him at uh, at, uh, at 74 because he knows at some point, Khabib is smart also, you know, he, he's not stupid. Uh, GSP is, uh, like, I, like I said, he's a well-rounded athlete. He's very disciplined. He's a very smart athlete. You know, uh, he, know where to, he, know, he knows where to take the game. Uh, he, he has explosive takedowns, uh, huge stamina, uh, 
he's a perfect athlete, you know. Mm-hmm. And I, I think I think Khabib was trying to drag him to to go to lightweight because he knew that uh, lightweight would would be better better for him to fight him. Definitely. Now, if if Khabib accepts to fight at seventy four, I'm sure the the fight's gonna happen. Now, seventy four kilograms uh, for everybody out there is about one hundred sixty five pounds. At least from GSP side, I know that uh, he's going he's ready. You know, it's, uh, so, so that's a scoop right there. That's a scoop right there. So, so you're saying if yeah. if you think the fight would happen, it would happen at 74 kilograms, which would be about 165 pounds. It's 163, but it would be about 165 at a catch weight. Yeah. And Khabib won't go you to know, 165. For, uh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, for those athletes, especially like GSP, uh, you know, the perfect body, uh, even even uh, 100 grams can, de- can defer in his game. Right. Uh, yeah, and, and this is this is not the this is science. So, yeah. uh, and he's very, very, very careful about uh, about uh, his training and his weight cut, and he knows what's his limit. So, uh, uh, I don't think he's gonna be doing it at lightweight. Uh, you know, even when he jumped to fight Michael Bisping at at middleweight, he knew when and where, the time and who. Yeah. To fight, uh, to, you know. Yeah, he was water loading a lot like just to make eighty five and stuff. Yeah, he was he was eating and water loading. But so do, do you, so GSP. Do you think he can make one fifty five? Let me ask you this question. One fifty five. Yes. One fifty five. Light lightweight. Yeah, yeah. Listen, but I I, I think he can make it, but he's going to lose a lot of. You know his. Uh, oh yeah, his muscle. Weapons. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna tell you though, he's gonna be as explosive as he, he was before. Uh, endurance, maybe he's gonna lose also power, endurance, and you can't you can't uh, risk this with Khabib. You know, a guy who was weak who wrestling bears when he was five. Sure, so, uh, sure. So, final question: Would do you think that fight will happen in the near future? I think if you put the right money, everything can happen. <laughs> they were <a> lot of money. <laughs> well, there's a lot of money in this game. <laughs> it's there's a lot of money in this game. And, and this is uh, just if you look at the pay per view, also, if uh, GSP has a huge pay per view reach from Canada, oh, yes. from uh, you know, all over the world. And Khalib now with, uh, with, uh, with his fan base in the Middle East and uh, Russia and, uh, and Central Asia, we're talking about Tajikistan, Kazakhstan, uh, Uzbekistan, those countries. I think I think it's going to be, uh, I don't know, but I, I think it's going to be like a billion dollar uh, fight. It's going to be a big fight. Uh, and if Connor fights also, Khabib. Oh yes. I think it's an it's an it's a it's an easy fight. Uh, it's an easy one billion dollar fight also. You know, That's... MMA sport is trying to grow very now. If you, you're looking at the numbers. You're looking at the uh, paychecks. It's, it's we're almost reaching boxing, and uh, yeah, we're going fast. So it's the fastest growing sport worldwide. So it is definitely growing. The wagers are growing. Uh, one more question about Habib: Do you think uh, having his father pass away would would do anything towards his performance? He looked unbelievable against Justin Gaethje. He dominated him. He took him down and he choked him out very quickly. Uh, do you think that would affect his mental game at all going forward into that match if he were to fight GSP? Uh, no, no. Listen, Khabib uh, have a very strong mental, uh, and I think Khabib, those things uh, strengthen him, uh, you know, strengthen him, and give him uh, more uh, force and uh, and uh, energy, uh, because if uh, you know his father's wish was to fight GSP. Absolutely. So, uh, knowing Khabib and knowing uh, uh, his mental. I don't think it's gonna it's gonna affect him in a negative way. It's gonna, on the contrary, it's gonna affect him in a very positive way. And you no, know? like he did, like it did the, with the, uh, Justin. So uh, yeah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so he was very motivated for that mental. fight. Yes, yeah. you know, there's a lot of Lebanese people in Australia, my friend. Bro, we were everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, listen, man. <laughs> you know what, bro? I, I, um, you know, you get it once you get our Lebanese food, and and then. That's it. You become Lebanese. That's it. <laughs> That's it. So, but, but, man, you, you, you're our first guest from uh, 
from Lebanon ever, and you're our last guest of the year. Um, it's been a rough year for everybody. If in, in closing, if there was something that you could say on a positive note to give people a bit of a feel good about the year that's been and about the year to come, is there something you could say on a positive note, my brother? Uh, I hope and uh, I pray every day that 2021 is going to be, uh, of course, better than 2020. Uh, we, we, we were just hearing bad news in 2020. You know, the, the whole the whole year was really bad on everyone. It, it was also worldwide, you know. Uh, I think whatever happens in 2021 is going to be better than yeah. 2020. But uh, now I have hope. I always have hope. I always... Uh, uh, have faith in God that uh, things are going to be better. We, it ju- it, we just need the people just need to be positive uh, and uh, and uh, kind to each other and the better, you know, uh, and always think positive. So, so I think uh, if we all think like this way, we're going to have a, a better world. Yeah, so, I agree. Uh, so let's uh, let's do it. It's. Uh, it's a must, and we have now to instead of fighting, we have to uh, to sit and and talk and discuss and uh, be open to each other. Yeah. And uh, exactly, of course, of course, I'm talking about nations, not about fighting MMA. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I'm, I'm with you there. We need I'm to with be you. one. We need to be one. Hundred percent. Well, yeah, we have to be one. And, and peace uh, be with everybody. Then, yeah. Well, hey, listen, man. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. I really appreciate it. Uh, you know, I did a little bit of research on you and everyone that I've spoke to about you has said nothing but great things. So I do really appreciate you coming on. I want to wish you the best for 2021. And hopefully next time you're in Las Vegas, we can have you in here on the studio. Maybe uh, we can do a one-on-one and of drink a course. couple of these whiskeys together, oh, yes. my brother. It would be a pleasure. And thank you so much for your time, guys. And I really appreciate you getting, on the sh- getting me on the show. And one more time. God bless cheers. you. Oh, cheers, Wasim my friend. Abinada. Merry Christmas again. Salam, my friend. <laughs> Salam, my brother. Cheers well, to you, brother. brother. Cheers to you. Cheers. Cheers, brother. Wow. That's a great way to 2020. Coming to an end. I love that guy. Wait a second. Wait a second. We got a couple of other people in the building. Oh, yes. This, this show's not over this yet. This show ain't over yet. <laughs> we still got a couple of people to introduce here. Yeah, I want to introduce this man. He's got one of the hairiest faces in Las Vegas, <laughs> but he makes some real, real tasty food. That's All right. the way from the Aussie Project, joining us on the What Happens Here podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stage, Alexander <laughs> James Biffer. <laughs> G'day, guys. What's How up, are you? How are you today? I'm not doing pretty good those pies are looking really tasty oh, yeah. can we get a shot of that or not travis <laughs> can we get a shot of the back of those pies Ooh, on, there we go, we go. Can, can we, we there? Oh, oh, yeah, there we go there we go get that out of the way there it is <laughs> Look at Show that. them the Ooh, look at that. I'm, oh. I'm, I'm actually pretty excited about this uh, about the new chopping board here. We got uh, Ian from uh, Spill the Tea. Yeah, he laser cut this chopping board. Our logo. I know. Yeah, I saw it. Really? Yeah, yeah. Oh my god, it's beautiful. I was yeah. watching. I was watching. I was a little bit jealous. I was like, "Where the fuck's my what happens oh, that's here?" Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so Holy uh, shit! I need one of those. What's going on? <laughs> Mate, not a lot. We I I actually just got back from Bermuda like the day before Christmas. So what? I'm glad yeah. you didn't get lost in the triangle. You know <laughs> yeah, what I'm right. saying? You I wanted it. to go out there, but they wouldn't let me. I really? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I, well, I saw your footage. It looked like you were having a good time. Yeah, I mean it was, it was perfect. I mean I went over there to get my visa done, obviously. So we had to quarantine for two weeks. Well, we weren't allowed to go into the the consulate for two weeks. Uh, so I just had to chill out there for two weeks. Nice. And, uh, <laughs> ah, ah, ah. Diving, swimming, yeah, jumping. It was, it was terrible, but you know. <laughs> Eat, drinking pina coladas. <laughs> yeah. you know? Someone yeah. had to do what it. What a rough life. <laughs> who, else, who else is in here? This guy. See, this, the, the guy I'm going to choose next, he's normally the guy behind the camera. Yes. But today he's in front of the camera. He's one of my Love guys it. that does all of our visuals. Welcome to the podcast. Hi, G. G. <laughs> What's up, G? Dude, hey, what's going? up, buddy? Man, it feels weird. It, it does sound weird. weird. Yeah, no, it feels weird being in front of the camera this I, time. Yeah, so, really so why do all like cameramen and videographers feel weird being on the other side of it? I don't know. We're just used to just being behind the camera and just like, you know, yeah, yeah. seeing so, the reaction and the bloopers of other people. And so are you, how, on your uncomfortability scale from 1 to 10 <laughs> right now, how are you feeling? 
<laughs> just say like a two or a three. <laughs> yeah. He's ready. He uh, looks I don't even want to look at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Just look at the face. Make, make love to it. it. <laughs> right. Make no, love to let it. Me, let me tell you something about Gene's work. Gene does some high quality class work that we use him for what happens here. He's a buddy of mine as well, but he does some really, really high quality class work. So basically, what do you, what is your body of work surrounded by? Is it is it martial arts? Is it weddings? Is it kids' birthday? Like what what's your specification of what you do? Um, honestly, is uh, everything. I do everything, everything from uh, promotional, yeah. you know, videos. Yeah. To, you know, I really love that hospitality feel. Yeah. Uh, especially what Las Vegas gives yeah. out. You know, yeah. I do um, some short films too and stuff. So I, anything creative, whatever you have in your mind, like. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. I'm gonna bring it to life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and well, and actually, the good thing about you is, is that you brought a bunch of shit to life for me that I didn't even have to explain to you. I kind yeah. of gave you a little vision, and, and and kind of you ran with it, and and it, it came out perfect. Um, so we're gonna slide in one of your videos right here. We're gonna put it in. Okay, so what you're seeing oh, right now, some footage. Yeah, this is uh, what you're seeing right now is one of um, one of Gene's videos that he does. This is basically what he did for the What Happens Here. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna be showing it right there as you can see it. <laughs> and, that, and yeah, so that's it. So so where can people get a hold of you, Gene? Like, if if they want to, can they call you or can they email you or can they just go, hey, Gene? I need a video! Like, how do, they, how do they get about it? Yeah, so uh, my Instagram is hygiene visuals. It's H-Y-G-E-N-E -E yeah. visuals. Hygiene visuals. Um, yeah, so that's where all my uh, video work is, yep. my photography work is. And yep. um, yeah, I have an email. Again, it's hygiene visuals at Gmail that you can contact me as well. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. And, and see, guys, we use we we use Gene for all of our stuff. So it's, he does it's, amazing work. Oh, it's it's high quality. Yeah, it's high, it's high quality. I mean, it, 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 look, it put it, look put it this way: if you're getting a promo video done, or if you're getting some kind of um, visual that you need for your social media, right. you want to do it where it's broadcast quality. You want to do it where people look at it and go, "Wow, these these guys are doing their shit." You Definitely. know, extra special. This is the kind of quality of work that he does. You can go onto any one of our. Uh, we got a bunch of stuff on our. Gene makes us look like a million bucks. We yeah. fucking we love this. <laughs> guy and if, for everyone following the what happens here podcast he was the one that did the uh shot with brandon moreno yeah at, at uh elliot and co's yep. and or at also, the garrison also, at the garrison also did the kevin lee the kevin lee and the video. kevin lee so he does a lot of our stuff has this he done a one good guy. has he done one for the aussie project yet not yet we're actually looking at the moment too so yeah when I this is the the man. oh you oh, could use it for the aussie project yeah. so <laughs> in end of 2021 a lot of people a lot of people uh said this year was um you know obviously devastating for everyone I kind of looked at it was like if, if if you didn't get your hustle on in 2020, then you don't have it. Did you get your hustle on in 2020? Me? Yeah. yeah no, I I definitely did. We with the help of my girlfriend, of course. Yeah. Um, yeah. We we started a little business. The lovely Lord that's <laughs> Lorena. <laughs> Lorena. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So we, she's going red. What's going? I think I've gone red a little bit. I don't know if it's the whiskey or what. <laughs> yeah, it's the whiskey, mate. Yeah. Hey, um, <laughs> so so. But you yeah, started no. this business in 2020. No, of course. I mean, you, you could have just sat back and gone, this year's crap, shit, uh, what can I do? There's nothing to do. Yeah. Or, you know, you could have looked at it and gone, all right, what can I do? What can I make out of this? What is it? If life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. That's yeah. right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So and if or, life gives or meat you meat pies. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 If life gives you meat, you make meat pies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. Yeah. Love and, it. And, and, and what about you? Was this, a, was this a beneficial year for you? Was it a hard year or did you prevail? Did you move forward? Um, move forward, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Um, uh, I just moved here to Las Vegas from California in July. Wow. Um, you know, I had a full time job there, and some things happened personally in my life, and I was like, you know, I need to make the move. Let me pursue uh, videography, photography full time, and now things been great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now you're with Elliot and Co. in the garrison. Yep. yep. Hanging out with these knuckleheads of what happens here. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 no, I love you guys. And what about you? What about me? Yeah, what about... <laughs> 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 was he just going into oblivion again? What do you mean? <laughs> what, we're talking about what was good for 2021 Bro, for you. 2020 was fucking amazing for me. I'll bleep myself out. Thank yeah. you so much for letting me on the show. It's been a crazy time meeting all these great fighters, these great people, these great cameramen, and these great producers behind me right here. I love you, bro. I love you. That's <laughs> Travis. It's Travis. No, no, voice of God. They, they <laughs> only get to see him on our Insta stories. Is Travis God? is leaving. It's his last last time. You know the handsomeness on your stories are 
<laughs> gonna go away. It's gonna go Dropping away. Dropping down a couple yeah. of points. Yeah, yeah that long We're hair. Definitely that, gonna miss you, Trav. That We're long def- hair and that mask. You look like Zorro. Yeah, the other, <laughs> just just have the other engineer just get long hair. You know? We need to get him in the camera. We got It's the last episode. We got to get him in the shot. Can you can you stick your head in there? It flicked that. Can one you right. come around? Hold on, just keep talking. I'll work on it. Right, can oh, yeah, you come gonna, around for us so the people on. can know who this guy was? And this guy does see. a lot of different episodes. Oh, uh, here we go. This guy is amazing. There he is. Ah, there yeah. is the man. There he is. Put the mask down, mate. Oh, We're all good. There it is. Look how young he is. He's like 13 years old. <laughs> there he is. He's never shaved, ever. He just pretends to shave. It just grows in like that. Well, we'll miss you here, Trav. We'll miss you here, mate. I really do appreciate all the work. And, you know, um, it's kind of, it's been, it's been a crazy year for us as well. Uh, you know, going from a t- being in the same job for 23 years to, automatically being unemployed in March and thinking, what the hell am I going to do? And then uh, the powers that be came to mind and all of a sudden this podcast was developed. Um, and, uh, you know, we did 21 episodes upstairs in the little office in my house with no mic and no lights. And then uh, we're, we're actually celebrating episode 23 here right now. Yeah, yeah nice. 23 episodes in this, in this place. Can we get a wide shot? Look at that. Look at that. So it's been a... Uh, Marcus, been... I'm going to make love to the camera right now. I'm just going to tell you like this. Thank you so much for letting me on board, bro. And uh, it's okay. I've had a blast. Well, it's only just the beginning. It, it's it's only just the tip. Just the <laughs> tip, you know? Matt's always got to take it to the next <laughs> fucking level. <laughs> just <laughs> taste it, mate. No, and you see, the thing is is that it, it, it looks good for people that are watching. The but for the people oh. that are listening, wondering what Matt looks like. Well, if I could describe him to you right now, he's a tiny little man in a proper 12 shirt with a fisted a little bottle of uh, proper 12 in one hand and the liter bottle in the other. Proper 12! (laughs) The only whiskey tough enough for the octagon. Triple distilled to perfection. Smooth notes of vanilla, oats, and that fine tasty whiskey. So shout out to Conor McGregor. Cheers to you. There you go, Connor. I was going to do it, but Matt just, there's no way you're going to get better than that. And yeah, man, I just want to, you know, as far as everybody that's supported the show, it's only a brand new podcast. However, the numbers have been going really, really well over the last few months. And it's due to everybody that's tuned in and listened um, through all of our listening platforms. And then, of course, here on YouTube. Couldn't have done it without you guys. Of course, I couldn't do it without all of our amazing sponsors. Um, uh, the, the Aussie Project primarily being one one of my good mates um, that, that, that we work together in Thunder from Down Under. And I'm so glad to have you on this, uh, this, this journey with me here, mate. Yeah, thank you very much. I want to say a huge thanks to having me on as well, mate. It's really helped us out as well. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. thank you very much. Oh, no worries. I want to say a big thanks to Baller Balm for the Beard Balm. Um, I want to say thanks to Founders Coffee for some of the tastiest, delectable coffee Show creators studios right here in Las Vegas. Um, who else? I'm just I'm just going off the bat here right now. Oh, um, man. I, 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 Thank you. Oh, to M- everyone M- M- MMA Uncensored. Yeah, we're shout so happy out to, to have MMA you guys. Uncensored. Shout out to MMA Uncensored. We are so glad to Cheers have you guys to them. on. Um, and uh, yeah, and that's about it, really. And the Balboa. The Balboa, the Bal- yeah, the Balboa account. That's on with the. If you follow MMA Uncensored, then you'll jump on board with all of that stuff. Uh, Gene. Anything else you want to say on a party note for 2020, brother? No, let's just get it started. Yeah, I'm ready to... Yeah. Fuck this year off and get the new one started. Exactly. <laughs> mm, mm. That's what it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's been I'm good. Gonna, I'm going to shamelessly plug. I mean, if you guys need anything done with uh, camera-wise, production-wise, Gene's the man right here. Every single Saturday night on Fight Night, you better be hitting up the Aussie Pie Project. They are going to be giving you good with all this food. Do I we- hit him up every Saturday on Fight Night <laughs> for that Aussie Project Pie love. Shout out to Travis. Love you, bro. I love all of you guys. Thank You're you, Travis. The man. Thank Thanks you for the Marcus man. for sending me on. <laughs> Thank you to our man Mike behind the camera who never wants to come here. Yeah. But hey, I want to say shout out to CJ, my business partner. But CJ! He's, been, he's been on a four-day bender, but that's okay. I <laughs> that's all CJ. right. So we're going we're gonna to spin some uh, stuff in right at the end here, some of our favorite clips from the end of the show. Once again, for the last show of 2021, this is Marcus Deegan for the What Happens Here podcast with Alex Biffin, with Gene, with my main man, Matt. Thank you, everybody. Pump that music up and let's dance it out. Let's go. go. The best of 2021 is yet to come, baby. You can try this. <laughs> 
Oh, yeah, that's the best round. Thank you very much. 20. We're out. We're out. Oh.